Bernie. Hi guys, Jonathan here from Pro Boxing Fans. Um, first of all, to David, are you in some ways more motivated for this one than some of your previous fights, given you're fighting, you know, a friend, a close friend of yours? And do you feel like there's, in a way, some of your legacy at stake here, or do you not see it that way? Um, it's an interesting, interesting question. I've you know, I've I thought about I've you know I remember watching uh, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. and um, I did the commentary for that for the UK um, feed uh, on BT Sport and I remember that I, I got butterflies when they were both coming to the ring you know and you know seeing the, you know my heroes going up there and, and performing you know, way past their prime way way past their prime it was uh, you know it, I just remember thinking ah. Yeah, this, you know, there's something about it. Then you look back at, you know, fighters like George Foreman, you know, 45 years of age, coming back to beat Michael Mora. I remember that one. I remember his, 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 his amazing fight with Evander Holyfield um, that he, you know, he just, he just he produced, he lost a very close fight there. And, you know, certain fighters peak late. Some of them, you know, have their, 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 their time. And I'm, un I'm unaware... You know, I honestly don't know what is left. I know in in the gym when I've been training recently, and I, only, I haven't been training that long. I train every day, train an hour every day, but I, I've I've never really um, I've never you know been in a situation like this before where I've been out for so long, and now I here I am coming there I am coming back to get in the ring at the Staples Center on such a big event on such short notice. Um, you know, there is pressure to pressure to look good. You know, the last thing I want is to look terrible. Um, I'm not sure what, what the the press and the media and the fans are going to think I'm going to look like. Um, hopefully I, I look and resemble something um, like I was once before. Um, resembling what I looked like in my last four comeback fights, I don't believe, you know, maybe the first one was, it was a first round knockout. Second was, I think it was a second round knockout. But my last two against, you know, world level opposition, dude, uh, Tony Bellew was a WBC cruiserweight champion. I think that showed, that showed where I was at that time. And at that time, I wasn't good enough to beat Tony Bellew, who was the cruiserweight world champion. Um, would I be good enough today? Have, am I worse than I was then or am I better? It's is completely unknown. Um, whoever's in the other corner, Joe Fulner, your question was, you know, uh, is, is there more at stake? Whoever is in the opposing corner, it's, a, it's, it's irrelevant. This is not about who I'm fighting. This is about me going through the process of training for a, a boxing match, you know, getting used to taking the punches, you know, my body's aching, my shoulders, my, my legs, my calves, my ankles, my neck, you know, I've, I'm, I'm doing the types of training I haven't done for a long time. But I'm enjoying it. I enjoy waking up and you know, hobbling to the to the to the shower in the morning, and then the shower warming me up to get back down there to the gym and train some more. I like that feeling. It's been a long time since I've had that, but you know, um, I, I I think this fight is going to be a spectacle and it's going to be an education um, for for the for because I know you know versus and Triller is a very young demographic who tune into this uh, this uh, platform. And I think they're going to see some amazing, you know, some of the old boys, you know, you know Oscar De La Hoya, you know, he's, he's in his early 50s now. But, you know, these, these kids might not have seen him in his prime, but he's one of the greatest to ever do it. I've, I've, as a teenager, I was a massive fan, still am, of uh, Oscar De La Hoya and to, to see him. And then, you know, it, even my, my kids, you know, my, my, my daughter's 11, my, my, my eldest son, Cassie's is 13. You know, I, was, I won the world title 12 years ago. This, you know, daddy's, you know, what daddy did was a long, long time ago. And it will be, it's nice for them to see me going through the process of preparing for a fight um, and getting back out there and, and doing my thing. So it's all, it's, it's for me, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant whether I'm fighting, you know, Joe Fournier or whoever it is in the other corner. This is all about, in my mind, it's all about me, how I can motivate myself, how I can get through training um, and get in the ring in tip top shape um, with the ability to be explosive, be dynamic and be able to do what I've always done as I wasn't able to do that 
in my last couple of fights. But since starting, since these few weeks I've been working out, doing the, the specific boxing training, it you know it feels like it feels very different to my last few fights from my prior comeback fights. Maybe because there was no pressure recently uh, to continue training, so I've just allowed everything to rejuvenate and recover. And I, I feel like a, a brand a brand new man. But you know I've still got three more weeks of training, and I've still got to get in the ring under the lights. I've still got someone undefeated throwing punches at me with uh, mean intentions. So after the fight, we'll we'll be able to see exactly where um, where I am. Just uh, one for Joe, if I can. Um, Joe, you said sort of, you know, you don't think this is the same David Hay of ten years ago, which is fair enough. But he has the more experience, obviously, at world level. How, how do you bridge that gap? Is there a way you've been able to do that through sparring? Do you think? Hang on mute. Sorry, Good. And I said, hey, yeah. And I said, yeah, I've been working with some bigger guys in sparring. Uh, I'm working on some slightly different strategies as you would do find a guy my size and my height. I think I give three, four inches to David. So uh, the strategy of getting inside and getting under his his long kind of uh, kind of low hanging jab has been something we've been we've been working on really well. And I think that um, you know. Yeah, world level experience. There's not many fighters out there that have more world level experience than David. So under the lights, I know he's going to be incredible. I know I'm going to be the one with the butterflies. But you know, I've also fought. You know, I fought in Atlanta, the Mercedes Benz Arena. I fought the O2 Arena, uh, actually in, in the UK, you know, in front of all my home fans. So I feel like the nuances that you pick up being a legend like David. Yes, I don't have those. And I'm not going to get them in three weeks. I just preparing a game plan, which means that I'm not even going to be having that conversation with him. Uh, you know, because if I get into that with him, I'm going to lose. I'm going to go away from David's strengths and go to my strengths. I'm going to let David try and do his game plan. And I'm going to do mine. And I'm going to stick to it. Because remember, I was a basketball player. We ran plays. This is what exactly what I'm going to do in this fight. I have a specific play and I have a specific game plan. And if I stick to that game plan, I'm 100% confident I'm going to win this fight. If I veer away and get into 50-50s with David Hay, mixing it up in the middle of the ring in the first 45 seconds, you know, it's going to be a, uh, you might hurt the moneymaker, as they say in England. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's, everyone's got a game plan until they get punched in the face. Remember that one. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Yeah. Excellent quote. David. That's true. That's true. So the plan <laughs> is to get punched in the face as little as possible. Our next